Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Vale of White Horse series. This is a district of Oxfordshire and there is a famous white horse here, hence the name. Will we be seeing it today? Let's see. Hello folks, welcome to Oxfordshire for the very first time. This is the district of the Vale of White Horse, which is a bit of a mouthful, and it's called the Vale of White Horse because there is actually a white horse, which we will see in a future episode. We won't see it here. However, what we will see in this episode is very, very interesting. There's some MOD land in this place, which we can't access, but I can certainly talk about it. Welcome to Shrivenham. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Oxfordshire, folks. This is the Vale of White Horse, and as the name suggests, there is a white horse to see here. However, it's not within the parish boundaries of Shrivenham. This is a large village located close to Oxfordshire's boundary with Wiltshire, and confusingly, it used to be in Berkshire until 1974. It's great doing these border villages, they're really fun. There's been a settlement in this part of Oxfordshire since at least 400 BC. The Romans are known to have occupied this area thanks to the discovery of a Roman villa close by. The main country estate in Shrivenham surrounded Beckett Hall, occupied in the 17th century by Henry Martin, a regicide of King Charles I. Later, the Barrington family owned the estate. To the east of the village is a vast expanse of land surrounding Beckett Hall that's owned by the MOD. That's because Shrivenham is where you'll find the Defence Academy of the United Kingdom. Shrivenham as a village has numerous thatched cottages, stone walls, an historic pump and a church. It also has three pubs, namely the Barrington Arms, the Crown and the Prince of Wales. We rather like this one. It's a village which has grown a bit in recent times and in certain places on Google Street View you can see how it used to look. This is Shrivenham, a big village with lots to see. Let's get walking. We start on Martin's Road, named after Henry Martin, a regicide of King Charles I who lived at Beckett Hall. It's where the allotments are. I find all the best landmarks me. Next door is Shrivenham Bowls Club. This was founded as a mixed bowling club in 1968 and moved to its present green in 1972. Out onto the B4000 or Highworth Road next, we come to an old red phone box. This one though was empty. Moving on, let's get a bit more sporty. This lane takes us towards Shrivenham Football Club, who play in the Hellenic League Premier Division, the ninth tier of football in England. Their ground is named Barrington Park, and their nickname is simply Shrivy. Shrivenham play in a blue and white hooped kit, not too dissimilar to that worn by Reading. And speaking of Reading, their most famous player played for them as well as Swindon Town. His name was Tom Jones. Well, it's not unusual as names go. Now, far be it from me to try and do a non-league football club out of some money, but it occurs to me that you can pay £6 to enter the ground here and watch Shrivenham Football Club, right? 
However, there's a very low fence around the ground. So in theory, you could watch the game, could you not, for free if you just stand here. Yeah, you can. I mean, shouldn't this be higher? Should this be taller? <laughs> this is surely they're doing themselves out of some money. I don't know. Right, let's carry on. There's more sporty things down here. The football club is just part of what is a huge sports and recreational area. The village also has a tennis club, a cricket club and even a netball club too. If you go straight across these playing fields you end up on Manor Lane where the back of the Shrivenham Methodist Church can be accessed. The Methodist Church was built in 1872 and was originally a primitive Methodist chapel. This is the front of it on the high street. At the end of Manor Lane is the Memorial Hall. This is one of the village's Grade 2 listed buildings. The hall was the idea of Charlotte Barrington, who had the view that it should be placed where possible in the heart of the village and in the midst of a recreation ground. The hall was opened in the summer of 1925 by Her Royal Highness Princess Beatrice, the daughter of Queen Victoria. One of its many beautiful features is a fine oak triple hammer beam ceiling, which is said to be a copy of that at St George's Hall at Windsor Castle. And if you think that's an impressive building, just wait until you see what's on the high street in a few moments time. So Nikki then pointed to this, which is just opposite. It's a water pump. There's a plaque, which is down here. Let's have a read of it. Can you read it, Nikki? Yeah, this pump was replaced by public subscription and is also in memory of Councillor Les Judd, whose enthusiasm for Old Shrivenham inspired its restoration, spring 1993. Yep. And there it is, it's got its own little canopy above it. Timber framed can canopy, timber frame would you say? Timber canopy. Timber canopy, yeah, timber canopy. So yeah, there you go. A very old part of Shrivenham and it's just gonna get better. We're walking that way. Shrivenham has grown considerably since the 1940s in both area and population, but much evidence still remains today of its rich history. The High Street is as good a place as any to see that evidence. This is the oldest part of the village. Many buildings along the High Street date back centuries, and lots of them are listed too. The High Street boasts quite an array of shops. Shrivenham has everything anyone would need in a village of this size. Just walking up the street, you'll see a selection of businesses. As well as a general store or two, there's also a hair salon, a pharmacy, a florist, and much more. There's a lot of independent retailers along this one road. Ever since 1988, Shrivenham has had a French twin, namely Mortray, a commune with some 1,000 inhabitants in Lower Normandy. In 2006, the mayor of Mortray paid a visit to Shrivenham. Activity between the two has been limited in recent years, but the parish council are hoping to revitalise the two's relationship. Well, I told you this was going to get better, and it is much, much better, isn't it? Listed buildings are plenty yeah. uh, down here. There's, uh, there's loads of them. It's probably easier to tell you what's not a listed building on this high street. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So we've got all sorts of things. We've got, uh, got a barber shop there. We've got a post office there. We've got another shop over there. We've got a food, food uh, shop. Yeah, there's all sorts of things here. Let's yeah. just keep walking because it carries on for a fair way, yeah? We called into one shop to have a look around. This lovely veg can be found at Bloomfields, a local deli who also have a branch in Highworth. Not far away we can see the front of a school. That would be St Andrew's Church of England Controlled Primary School, originally built as a national school in 1863. Almost next door is the impressive Elm Tree House, which was built of local stone in about 1700. A Tuscan porch was then added later. Here's a bus stop in front of the Barrington Arms Hotel. Shrivenham is served by two buses, the main one being the S6 Gold, which runs between Swindon and Farringdon. The Barrington Arms has dominated this part of the high street for centuries. Its full name is the Barrington Arms Hotel and Posting House. 
Directly opposite is another popular pub, the Prince of Wales. Its origins are much more obscure, and its history can only be traced back as far as 1843 at the earliest. So according to Nicky, this is a memory bench, and it is in memory of whom, Nicky? Rafu. Rafu? The, oh, the boss. The boss. Okay, I have no idea who Rafu or the boss was, but you know what? This is a nice place to have a bench, because I'll tell you what, you can watch the world go by on here. All we're missing is a bit of sunshine and my stitching in the cup of tea. <laughs> Be perfect, wouldn't it? Okay, so now we're going to head towards the church. So we're back this way uh, towards that bus stop, turn right up Church Walk, and guess what? The church is at the top of Church Walk. Let's head up Church Walk now. Shrivenham's entry in the Doomsday Book does make reference to a church, but the exact position of it is unknown. Here's the lit gate of St Andrews, the current church, which was rather unusually rebuilt in the 17th century during the reign of Charles II. It stands on the site of an earlier 12th century building. Buildings around the churchyard include the Grade 2 listed Jasmine House, and this one which was or is some kind of church meeting room. There's little in the way of surviving material from the 12th century church, save for part of the west wall of the nave and the font, which is carved from Purbeck marble. In the 15th century, the church was cruciform, with a central perpendicular Gothic bell tower. The unusual rebuilding came in 1638, and it was funded largely by the Earl of Craven. The building today is pretty much the same as it was when it was completed in 1638, apart from the addition of an 18th century porch. Okay, this is another cavernous church. It's massive. Now, one thing we noticed as we walked in is this in this window. Now, I wonder how many people out there know what that is. Nikki knows what it is. Do you, would you good. like to enlighten them, my dear? Well, it, it's part of the system for the bell in the belfry. It's part of that ringing system. Where, you know, with the rope and the pulley and, and stuff, so There'll I don't be... know exactly know what they call it, but there's a few bits of it around, so it looks like whatever was up there has been renewed at some point. Yes, there's the, there'll be a, a groove on the edge of this where the rope, here we go, look, you see, that's recessed there, the rope sits in, sits in that, and when the bell's pulled, this thing turns and turns the bell, making it ring. Okay, let's see what else we've got in here. This is a this is a massive church. It's huge. I can't tell you how big this is. The ceiling is a long way up. <laughs> really old iron radiators. Are they on? No. no, they're not on. Okay. <laughs> it is warm in here though. It's definitely warmer than outside. Font. Octagonal font. Seen a few of them in our time. Octagonal. Yep. Yep. A reason for it be so we've got a nice little gold lectern there, an eagle. So I assume this is the tower we're standing underneath now. Yeah, it will be because you can see the bell ropes. It's a bit dark up there. <laughs> yes, the bell ropes do come down. And if we head into the chancel, we pass the organ on the way. Ooh, we've got somebody important here, look. Oh, have we? John Lord Viscount Barrington. Ah, that explains the name of the Barrington Hotel, which we've just and seen. And then John, John Wildman. Wildman. Look at those crests. At the top of both of those, aren't they something? I like seeing carvings like that. There's more here, there's a countess here. Countess? Yeah, the Viscountess Barrington. Ah, right, so the more Barringtons. Yeah. And Very... Lady Viscountess Barrington. Yep. Yeah. Are these Barringtons as well? That's, that's uh, John Wildman again, that one, Wildman. and Eleanor Wildman. So obviously... This one here is John Neal, I think. John? It's, again, it's a bit degraded, so... Yeah. It's like that um, thing we saw on the wall outside. Yeah. They've worn down over time. So we're in the chancel now, and... An altar. Isn't this just amazing? <laughs> are these chandeliers? Yeah. These uh, candelabras, I think, is the actual name for these. They're not chandeliers, are they? Look at the window there, you'll have our family crest. Yeah, you would have thought local so. Local families who paid for the privilege of having them there. Let's have a look in the side chapel. Side chapel, yep. 
could spend all day in here. <laughs> it's, it's almost cathedral-like, isn't it, in its, yeah. in its makeup, this one. There's a memory book here. It's even on the right date as well. Yeah, somebody's been in this church this morning. Well, yeah, it's open, so <laughs> there will have been to unlock it. <laughs> oh, we can light a candle as well. Yeah. Shall we light a candle? Haven't got any coins to put in the collection, I'm afraid. Oh, well, never These mind. Not, not on this occasion. No, we haven't found a cash machine in Shrivenham yet, have we? There's not another one here, look. Richard Smith. Oh. And another crest up at the top there. Might be distant, re distantly related to us. You never, never know. know. <laughs> right, let's head out to the church and see what else we can find in Trevenham. Well. So another buried elsewhere, we're like we saw in Hepton Stall. So buried elsewhere is 38616 Gunner GW Hicks, Royal Garrison Artillery, who passed away 26th of April 1918, aged 23. <clears throat> let's walk around to the other one. I can't read it from here. Well, I'm good. that's where I come round. So we've got 115511 Pioneer J. Ebsworth, Royal Engineers, 1st of July 1918. That grave is marble and this one is stone. Because you can feel the difference when you when you actually touch the gravestones. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's the second one that I've seen with the buried elsewhere. Is a rare thing. So that is a cenotaph, this is a grave. As we leave the churchyard, we see Shrivenham House, which is linked to the Barringtons. It was originally built in the 17th century, but was remodelled by them when they were building the nearby Beckett Hall. It's Grade 2 listed, and so are these white cottages, 8, 10, 14, 18 and 24 Claypitts Lane. There are many more in the village. In fact, here are three more not far away. On the left is Wisteria Cottage, and on the right is Barnacle Lodge, behind which is Tarifa Cottage. They're all over the place. These thatched cottages, number 2 and number 4 Farringdon Road, are both listed as well. A lot of the properties around Shrivenham would have been linked to the Barringtons. One of them, of course, was Beckett Hall, but it's something we can't actually get a look at because it's on private land. Check out this milestone, by the way, on Longcott Road. Beckett Hall is to the east of the village. Park Avenue is as close as we can get to the estate, and here I can show you why. Now, this little spur off the main street does actually continue, but you can't go any further than this Fence. And the reason for that is because beyond this, it's Ministry of Defence property. And it's all part of the Defence Academy of the United Kingdom. A lot of Shrivenham Parish is covered by this. And of course, I can't access it to film it. What I can do, though, is give you a special section all about it. Shrivenham has been connected with military education and training since 1936 when the Beckett estate was sold to the War Office following the death of Charlotte Barrington. A training establishment was built to the northeast of Beckett Hall. At the outbreak of war in 1939, the 133rd Officer Cadet Training Unit was established here, one of six units created to meet the increased demand. Shrivenham specialised in anti-aircraft artillery, a course that lasted six months. In 1946, the Royal Military College of Science moved into the establishment, having been dispersed across three sites during the war. In 2015, the college was absorbed into the Defence Academy of the United Kingdom, which provides higher education for personnel in the British Armed Forces. On the same site is the Conflict Studies Research Centre, although it falls within Watchfield's boundaries. The MOD's independent think tank is also in the area. The rest of the walk takes us through some of Shrivenham's more residential areas. There are a few landmarks in these, but they're few and far between. This pond at Cannons Hill Gardens is one of them, though. It's located off Vicarage Lane, and so too is Stainswick Lane, where you'll find Shrivenham's main cemetery. The vast majority of the housing estates around the village are post-war properties. 
the Charlbury Road Estate is a good example. There are newer areas than this though. At the entrance to one of them, just off Station Road, is the Barrington Griffin. This is a slab of Portland stone which represents the Barrington family's coat of arms. As you head further north and west you'll find more new housing. This estate, Roman Way, is so new Google Street View has yet to cover it. These streets and this little playground are still shown as fields. Shrivenham continues to grow too, many more new housing estates are being constructed all around the village. Now considering I've got Nikki with me, some of these properties are what the wife would describe as, well do you want to say it? Chocolate box. Chocolate box, and that one certainly is. It's good having Nikki with me as well because sometimes we discover things, or rather I discover things, that I have absolutely no idea about, but Nikki knows a lot about. Now, you may have seen this on new build properties before. This sort of white, chalky sort of residue on the brick itself. Could you please tell us what it is, Nikki? Well, you know what it is because I've just told you. Oh, well, I thought I was, I was gonna, I was gonna give you the uh, the authority to do it there, but if you want me to do it, I'll do it. It's called efflorescence, which is a very uh, big word, basically for salt petering. It's to do with uh, water uh, coming through the bricks. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not the walls aren't going to collapse, basically. But uh, yeah, if you see that on new build properties, that's what it is. It's all to do with water. Right, we are almost done with this route. Uh, up here along Small Pits Road is Dams and Trees, the road where I parked. And uh, once we get back to the car, I'm going to head towards the south of Shrivenham. There are two more things I want to talk about, but luckily they are next to each other. One of them is the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal, and the other is Shrivenham Station. It's actually wrong to call this the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal. Its official name is Wilts and Barks, however I prefer saying it the first way, so tough. The canal was opened in 1810 and it ran for 52 miles in total and mainly transported coal from Somerset. It was abandoned in 1914. Many of the structures along its length have been demolished, filled in or built over. Some sections though have been restored, but this is not one of them, as you can see. Just to the south of the canal is a railway line. This is the Great Western Main Line, and to the west of Station Road was the site of the former Shrivenham Station. The main station building was built in 1840. It was very small, faced with flint, and had Tudor-style windows and a roof that projected in the form of a canopy. It closed in 1964 when passenger services were withdrawn from all intermediate stations between Didcot and Swindon. The station buildings were demolished in 1965. So the site of the old station is not the easiest thing to capture, but you can see the old platforms just, and you will have done in the last shot as well. 
So yeah, it's an active railway line, but there's no longer a station here in Shrivenham. And this is right on the border with another parish here in the Vale of Whitehorse. And that's the one I'll be heading to next. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Shrivenham and I'm out.